it's 20th of June. I sometimes hear news about the fuel crisis in the US and Europe, about the rise in the price of gasoline and diesel. You know, we also have a fuel crisis. Fuel at gas stations has risen in price at least twice, and still it is not to be found. Both gasoline and diesel in many regions of Ukraine are scarce. This is largely a consequence of the fact that the Russians deliberately destroy oil refineries and fuel depots. They do not spare missiles at all to destroy civilian infrastructure. In this way, the Russians want to provoke a whole chain of internal crises, which should help them win at the front, destroying fuel supplies to make it harder to deliver food and weapons, to make people nervous about rising gas prices and pressure the government to do something about it. The Russians are destroying hospitals and killing doctors so that there is nowhere and no one to save the lives of Ukrainian soldiers and volunteers. Railroad stations are bombed indiscriminately in an attempt to interfere with Western aid supplies. This is such a hybrid war in which Russians have no rules at all. They firmly decided to destroy Ukraine, and in order to achieve this goal, they are not going to limit themselves to anything at all. But as all this happened with arrogant aggressors, they made serious miscalculations in their plans that will not allow them to win. They underestimated the determination of Ukrainian society and the readiness of Ukrainians to help each other in order to achieve a common goal. The Russians seriously believed that almost half of the Ukrainian population would greet them with flowers. That is, the entire top military political leadership of Russia is not only serial killers, but also clinical idiots who created the most distorted picture of the world for themselves and really believed in this picture. However, I digress. I was not talking about this scam, but about the unity of Ukrainians in the face of existential danger. This is especially evident in the attitude of people towards the military. In principle, even before the large-scale invasion of Russia, the army was the most respected institution in the country. The army was even ahead of a traditionally very influential Orthodox Church in Ukraine. But what is happening now cannot be described with one word, respect. I started this podcast episode with a story about the fuel crisis in Ukraine. My comrades and I travel around the frontline regions and are very dependent on the availability of fuel in the tank. The closer to the front, the fewer working gas stations and the longer the queues for those few that still continue to work. People have stand in lines for five or six hours in order to get about two gallons of fuel. This is the maximum that is allowed to be released to one buyer. But the serviceman is let through without a queue. People are ready to let us through just because we are in a military uniform. Many gas stations give the soldiers free coffee or free hot dogs. I try not to abuse the generosity of gas station owners, but honestly, a couple of times these free hot dogs literally brought me back to life after especially hard days. But it seems to me the best way to illustrate the attitude of people towards the army is not free food and not the opportunity to refuel without a queue, but such stories. In one of the towns we visited, a woman approached me with difficulty choosing Ukrainian words. It was obvious that she's from an exclusively Russian-speaking environment in eastern Ukraine. This woman hugged me, thanked me for being in the army, and presented me with a package of chocolates. It was not a gift to me personally. It was a desire to show gratitude to the entire Ukrainian army, and the woman realized it by giving sweets to the first person in uniform she met. Just in case, I remind you that each of you can help me and my family by sending a few dollars through the page Fighting for Ukraine on the GoFundMe.com website. Your donations is the only thing which keeps this podcast alive. Thank you.